All right, so I know it's been a while since I've done any of these videos. Uh, I've been rather sick for the past three weeks, I've barely eaten. I'm feeling better now, but there's been a lot of other stuff going on as well, and I just, priorities, I haven't really had time to get to one of these. Um, but I figure, uh, this time around, let's do a video that should have been with some of the previous ones that I've been redoing, but hasn't, ah, well, never actually got done uh, very well. Uh, it was sort of included with one of them, and it didn't cover the subject very, very well at all. And with that, I mean enumerations in Ida. Uh, there's quite a bit more going on with them than first meets the eye. Uh, now, they are still very simple to use. You'd use them the same way you would in any other language. There's just a lot of other things that are useful to point out because they're provided for you in Ida and they're not really provided or are provided in very obtuse ways in other languages. So let's get into this with just defining a really simple enumeration. And let's just print these out. Uh, I think the image thing works uh, with these now as well. See, this wasn't something that had existed in Ida up until recently. You used to have to do the, the type and then image and then contain the thing. Um, So let's just, nope, I'm not doing that stuff. And I haven't forgotten any syntax. Good. So we'll just put uh, the, the second one as well. Well, nope, I do not want to do that. I want to do this. Okay. Now, whether or not you see this kind of behavior in any programming language depends on exactly how that language wants to behave. I have seen some where <coughs> printing out the value of the enumeration gives the actual underlying value. Whereas it's actually normal in Ida to get the representation of the value, which I find much better because that's really the whole point of using the enumeration. Otherwise, you'd just have a bunch of values defined and use those instead. Now, building upon this, for a lot of languages, it is possible to define the values in line, such as something like that. It is a little different in Ida. I, I'm not quite sure how I feel about this being a separate thing. I sort of lean against it, but regardless, this is how you wind up doing it. <clears throat> Uh, and we'll just do. So these are just their normal values anyways, because that's how enumerations work, starting from the base value. It just increments one unless you get specific about it. And there's no point in running this again, because it won't change anything about this behavior. I just wanted to show that off. Um, one other thing before we get into the rather large amount of attributes that enumerations have is that it is also possible to use a little bit of a uh, surprising value for these. Yep, 
and I will inevitably have to change this. And because we're going to get an ambiguity, I will have to fall back to this. Because otherwise it will confuse it for characters. This is actually how the characters are defined in Ida. Uh, sort of implicitly, though. They're, the standard package doesn't actually exist. But uh, this, is, this is how it's done. You can use character literals as the representation values in an enumeration. Uh, I think you can actually mix them, too. I've never tried this, ever. Uh, apparently you can. So yeah. Aside from the, I guess, text literals, the values, things, you can use character literals as well. Now, getting into the um, the attributes that I mentioned, let's. I think you can chain these. So, if we do example first, and then image, and example. Well, it's just last and then image, so I'll have to change this from second to last. But I think. Yeah, you can chain these. <clears throat> now this is very useful in that if we go and add something into the... in here as well, uh, we'll, we'll just change this to last. We're going very literal. Because this is an attribute that's calculated by the compiler, essentially, uh, sometimes by the runtime, but... Um, we don't actually need to change anything about the code because we specified that we want the last value in that enumeration regardless of whatever value uh, that actually is. So if your intent is not to get a specific value, but rather get a value at a specific position, this is one of the ways to do that. Uh, continuing on with that theme, Let's add another one in here. And I believe this works like example post. And we want the second one, and then we want the image of it. No, 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 no. I'm thinking the wrong way. So we want not the position of what we're passing, but rather the uh, we're we're passing it the yeah. I think these are backwards in my opinion, but maybe that's just the way I think. But there. Um. Oh yeah, because this whole thing actually starts from zero. So enumerations, unlike a lot of the other stuff in Ida, are actually zero indexed unless you go in and actually do the representation clause. So we can change that here. I'm doing this for a reason. Uh, we're going to get into that in just a second. But, uh, yeah, other than me forgetting that, nothing should be wrong here. I still am. Where? No. What? Oh, because I didn't save it? Yeah, that, okay. Silly mistake. <clears throat> no, we still do that. Oh, I know why. I know why. So this is not the literal value, this is just the index of it. Uh, so 
continuing with the whole thing about these being zero indexed, regardless of what's in the representation clause here, it's zero, one, two, three. So this would be the two as far as that's concerned. There is another similar attribute that I was thinking about. Um, as far as I know, these are only available under NAT, so be a little cautious with that. If you're using the PTC compiler or similar, this may not work out. This looks up through the enumeration's value instead of the enumeration's index. So a little, a little funky just given that it's the other one has the value thing as well, but effectively it's the index, not the actual value. That should be changed. I can't believe they didn't change that, but yeah. Another one regarding uh, relative and absolute positions within these is we do, and I got to remember exactly how this whole thing works. So we do example, I know. Two. And we want the succeeding ones image. <clears throat> Must be a type. So that can't be trailing. We've got to do this. Examples succeeding. There. The really convenient thing about this is if we change this to 4, which would not be the next value, but rather the next in the, in the succession, this will still work. There is a similar one called pred, or preceding. That works the exact same way, just the preceding one rather than the succeeding one. And this is actually mostly it. There's one more little thing I want to show off. So uh, this goes by. change this instead to example pulse of C. Oh. And, oh, yeah. Um, so we also need to call the image of uh, that. And that works. Okay. So this is basically the counterpart of the val. Instead of passing it the um, the value and then looking up the literal at that, that at that position, we're giving it the we're essentially asking it for the position of C. So asking it for what where what, what the index of it is, and going along with what I've said before, with the enumerations being zero indexed, oddly uh, zero one two. That checks out. And <clears throat> there is a similar counterpoint that's available if you have if you are working with uh, NAT compilers and anything else that may support this. I, I don't again I don't believe that the PTC and other compilers do. Uh, but this one is enum rep, which will instead get the representation value, which should wind up being four. And it is. Um, so yeah, I believe this is everything relevant to show off. If I have missed something, just point it out down in the comments and I'll 
figure out something to do with that. But um, I hope this video has been helpful. Um, I know there's quite a bit more to enumerations than at first meets the eye. Granted, it's not a particularly con uh, complicated subject either, though. But it, it is good to know this stuff that is available for you. Uh, if you have found this video helpful, please consider giving a thumbs up. It helps out quite a bit. And also, if you like these videos in general, consider subscribing. Uh, YouTube does some funky stuff with subscribers now. So if you actually want to get notified, you have to also hit the little bell. I don't understand why, because it seems like subscribing should already do that for you anyways. But, uh, yeah, until I can get around to doing another one of these, have a good one.